Thank you, Silvia. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I wish to thank the, the organizing committee for the, the choice of this wonderful place, and especially Gaston Godard uh, for the definition of this session dedicated to the history of neogene geology. Allow us to present our research. Um, our research is about Karl Mayer, Eimer, and the history of the Messina stage. This research, which that does not presume uh, to be complete and exhaustive, uh, starts from some handwritten documents signed by uh, Karl Mayer Eimer that we found in the historical archive that we maintain at the Ispra Library. Uh, this work was develop, developed uh, as part of the research activities of ISPRA and under the auspices of the History of Geoscience section of the Geological Society of Italy, that is a society member of uh, uh, INIGEO. Uh, Karl Mayer uh, was born in Marseille, in France, on July 29, 1826. Uh, son of a Swiss merchant, uh, Karl Frederick, and of Elizabeth uh, Maria Francisca Kunkler, uh, Karl received his early schooling in Rennes and after the death of the father in St. Gall. Then he entered at the University of Zurich in 1846, uh, first stu studying medicine and natural history. Then he turned to geology and paleontology, probably as a result of his schoolboy passion for collecting fossils transmitted by the conservator of the geological collection in Rennes. Uh, after graduating, uh, he worked in Paris from 1851 to 54, principally at the Musée, Musée d'Histoire Naturelle under the guide of Charles Daubigny, Elie de Beaumont and Achille Valencien. Then he moved back to Zurich Polytechnic, where he was appointed as assistant in the geology faculty. Uh, later, he moved back to Zurich Polytechnic, where he was appointed as assistant um, in the, uh, sorry. Uh, later, uh, he became a lecturer and curator of the collections, position that he held until his death in February 25, 1907. In 1975, he was appointed professor of stratigraphy and paleontology. His contemporary described uh, Karl Mayer uh, as a man with a lonely, original, and sometimes picturesque character. He was described as frugal but robust, a tireless worker and gatherer, habituated to hardships. Modest and neglected in his clothing, he was repeatedly arrested as a tramp. <laughs> he composed some poems in Italian and even a novel in Latin language. Around 1865, he had the anagram Eimar to his patronymic to avoid the confusion with other persons of that common name, in particular with the German poet Karl Mayer. Uh, and so he changed his name into Karl Mayer Eimar. During his life, he traveled in Western Europe and the Mediterranean, especially in France, Switzerland, Italy, England, Germany, Austria, and Hungary collecting fossils and making detailed stratigraphic research. Um, in, in 1885, he started to travel in Egypt. That was his last travel before his death. Karl Mayer collected a huge number of fossils and made many geological observations. Endowed with an excellent memory and sharp eye, Mayer became a deep specialist on fossils, especially tertiary mollusks. For this reason, his contemporary gave him the appellation Tertiary Meyer. His huge uh, fossil collection was kept in Zurich for over 100 years, and in the early 70s, handed to the Natural History Museum in Basel. The collection, represented by 500,000 specimens in about 1,000 drawers, was returned to ETH in Zurich in 2020. All this material is registered in the database of Earth Science Collection and is freely available to the public. It's interesting, it's interesting to note that this collection was also implemented thanks to numerous purchases or donations by fossil hunter uh, and, or fossil amateur, such as the Italian Giovanni Battista Meneguzzo or local scientists such as the German Karl Zittel. More than 150 letters received from, geolog from geologists 
all over the world are stored in the Zurich Polytechnic Archive. And these researches enabled Mayer to publish his first classification of the tertiary series of Europe in 1857, presented during a congress in Switzerland. These works they opened to one of the most interesting topics developed by Mayer in his long career, that is research on tertiary stratigraphy. His stratigraphical works uh, were of great importance and have been of some influence until the present day. In 1858 uh, appeared his first major publication uh, on the subdivision of the tertiary, which he divided into 12 stages, as you can see uh, in, the, in the slide, according to lithological and faunal criteria, named after typical localities uh, in the tertiary basin of Western Europe. And this uh, is an attempt of a synchronistic table of the tertiary formations of Europe. In this work, he introduced new names for these stages, some of which were never adopted or only remained in use for a short period. Other terms, however, are still used today, uh, although uh, with somewhat modified definition, for example, Bartonian, Tongrian, Aquitanian, Helvetian, um, Tortonian, Piacentian, Astian, uh, and so on. His stratigraphic schemes were published in the form of autograph synoptic tables, which he often republished in an improved form. As regards the subject of this presentation, in this first stratigraphic scheme, we see that the upper tertiary is subdivided into six stages, from 7 to, to 12, ending with the Piacentian and Astian that follow uh, the Tortonian stage. As we can see from the listing of lithological unit uh, on the right side of the slide, um, particularly those in northern and southern Italy, Ober Italian and Unter Italian, um, Mayer demonstrates a good knowledge of Italian geology, although the stratigraphic characterization is still approximate. Uh, he modified his original classification several times. Uh, which was further revised as sub subsequent research refined the chronostratigraphic definition. This classification uh, uh, was republished uh, almost identically in 1865, with the only change concerning the two upper tertiary stage. In fact, as you can see, Meyer eliminates the Piacentian stage, which becomes the lower part of the Astian stage and introduced the new Saharian stage in which he described all sands and gravel deposits with big vertebrates, glacial deposits and river and lake deposits uh, on the valley. Um, it's important to note uh, that, uh, um, okay, uh, that this, in this scheme, Meyer uses the Astian defined in 1853 by Paul de Rouville around Asti to indicate a regressive series of littoral deposits formed by yellowish sands. In Italy, the Astian is well represented in the central part of the tertiary basin of Piedmont. Two years later, in uh, 1867, Meyer published a paper in which he revised the terms of the upper tertiary, introducing the new Messina stage dedicated to the city of Messina uh, in Sicily. Meyer considers uh, this stage to be intermediate between the Miocene and Pliocene and invokes this as a useful way of making this distinction unnecessary. Um, he underlines how this stage is simultaneously made up of extensive marine, brackish and freshwater deposits and has therefore already been defined, even partially, in various ways by other authors. Sarmatian by Edward Seuss for the lower part, an Indian by Os Oswald here uh, for the middle part, and Zanklian by Giuseppe Seguenza for the upper part. Meyer highlights how my Pliocene Mars of marine origin in the Messina area are present in the wool uh, suggestion. This is why he considers that the name of the stage must be related to the name of the city of Messina. This paper was followed by the fourth version of the table, 
in which appear the Messina stage. Meyer attributes to the Messinian sediments um, uh, a thickness of about 300 meters, referred to the Piemonte Lange and a duration of 20,000 years. Furthermore, he divides the Messinian into three substages, Billowitz Liers in Moravia, Inzersdorf Liers in Austria, and Eppelsheim Liers in Germany. Doing this, uh, Meyer uh, weakened the usefulness of this term in regional stratigraphical correlation and contributed to, to the miscorrelation of the paratetis regression with respect to the central basin. In those same years, the uh, pharmacist Giuseppe Seguenza from Messina introduced the, the Zanclean age. In an handwritten letter dated 1867 that we held in the ISPRA archive, Seguenza distinguishes uh, a succession of white mars, limestones, and fossiliferous sandstones that he called Zanclean and that he attributes to the lower Pliocene. He published this research the following year in the bullet Bulletin de la Société Géologique de France, La Formation Zanclean ou Research sur une nouvelle formation tertiaire. The term Zanclean derived from Zancle, that is the Greek uh, colon, the Greek name of the uh, town of Messina. Seguenza uh, defined the Zanclean stage as the lower part of the Pliocene to complement Meyer's Astian stage in the upper Pliocene. He described the geology of Messina area but not a specific stratotype section, and reported the, the Gravitelli exposure, as you can see in the slide, uh, in which the formation evidenced in the slide uh, with, a, um, um, with a box <laughs> um, um, to the Zanklan and the overlying formation to the Astian. Uh, the, the sequence is in the uh, inverted order. The, the younger is the Astian, Astian and uh, the, the, the oldest, the Zanklian. Um, lately, Seguenza, in 1873 and in 1880, considered the Gravitelli, Gravitelli section as the stratotype of the Zanklian. Despite my assertion, assertion in which he established the Messinian d'accord uh, avec Messier Seguenza, as we can see in the 1867 um, paper, Later comments by Seguenza show that a debate between the two scientists was already taking place. In fact, Seguenza writes, the name Zanklan must, must be restricted to the lower Pliocene. However, Meyer re rejected this with few arguments, this name, and replaced it with the name Messinian, even if it has no right or of priority. In November 81, 1881, Seguenza wrote to Meyer asking a copy of the table presented during the Second International Geological Congress in Bologna, remembering, remembering their first face-to-face -face meeting in that event. Uh, as known, in 1873, in Italy was established uh, the Royal Geological Survey, and in those years, the National Scale Mapping Project began. The Sicilian area, uh, for obvious reasons related to mining activity, was among the first to be studied, and a number of geological sheets were printed in the late 19th century. A preliminary map uh, of the entire Sicily, Sicily Island, was realized in uh, 82 by Luigi Baldacci, engineer of the geological survey, under the scientific supervision of Giorgio Gemmellaro, founder of Geological Institute in Palermo. This map was presented during the Second International Geological Congress. The stratigraphic subdivision does not include um, either the terminology introduced by Meyer or that of Seguenza, using only classical lithostratigraphic term, Tripoli, rock salt, congeria strata, sulfur layers, sands, etc. Before the realization of the sheet 254 Messina that was printed in 1885, Seguenza produced a 25,000 25, scale geological map of the Messina Strait, 
uh, in which he highlights uh, the tortonian in upper Miocene units and placed the Zanclean at the base of the Pliocene, represented by Mars and Suns. Needless to say, in the legend, the term Messinian does not appear. In the Messina sheet of the uh, Royal Geological Survey at scale 100,000, Emilio Cortese introduced uh, in the upper Miocene above the Tortonian the Sarmatian stage, introduced by the, Ru the Russian Barbeau de Morny in 1847 and used by Fuse in 1866. In the southern part of Western Europe, the Sarmatian stage corresponds to the strata of Messinian stage. It's important to note that uh, in the meantime, Meyer suggests in the descriptive notes of his own um, geological map of Liguria, a new nomenclature for the subdivision of Messinian substages. In fact, he replaces the Eppersheim substage with the new Materian substage on the basis of the Materia Calcarenites in Italy, which are considered to be equivalent to the Uto deposits in Zurich, the Swiss Molas and the Congeli Strada of Southern Europe. Three days ago, we received a copy of the sheet uh, 76, 67, <laughs> Genova, realized by Meyer, but as you can see, it has no legend or descriptive uh, things uh, useful to comp comprehend the stratigraphic approach of Meyer with field data. Uh, we are we will work uh, on it in the future. Instead, the tri this tree partition uh, in substages is well represented in this wonderful panoramic view taken from the castle of Serra Valle Scrivia in Piedmont. In January 1876, Giovanni Capellini received some fossils taken in the Matera Calcarinites from Guglielmo Guiscardi. They included some large incomplete vertebrae collected in gravina, a few vertebrae and a fragment of a, a, the mandible of a whale collected close to Galatone. In this paper, Capellini attributes this deposit to the Pliocene, in contrast to Meyer's statement that defined the materin as substage in the upper part of the Miocene. Despite the comment received from several influential geologists, Meyer persists in his subdivision of the Messinian, and at the Second International Congress, he proposed his own highly adjectivated, as you can see, international, natural, homophon, practic, uniform, international classification, in which he insists on the Messinian tripartition, entering into open conflict with Italian geologists, such as uh, Sacco, Capellini, Viola, and De Stefano. As is evident, he continues to put the matter in, in the upper Messinian and so in the upper Miocene, excluding any attribution to the Pliocene. In later Italian cartography, different positions are taken. Cosimo de Giorgi, in his geological map of the Basilicata region at 250,000 scale, defined the sherry schist and molasses and the machinio sandstones as Miocene Pliocene strata sensu Meyer accepting the thesis of the Swiss geologist. In 1888, Meyer reduced the partition of the Messina into two substages, leaving the Billowitz and the Materin, to which he attributed a Miocene Pliocene age. From this year on, Meyer devoted his attention to research in Egypt, in particular on the Tongrian stage, that is the upper part of the Oligocene. Um, after careful field survey in the, Matera, in the Matera area, Giuseppe Di Stefano and Carlo Viola made the detailed study of the layers considered Messinian around Matera and Gravina, and proved that they must be referred to the most typical Pliocene. Then Federico Sacco, uh, in this paper, arrives at the conclusion that the Messinian must constitute a single stage, corresponding to a general low sea or estuary or even continental fascias, the local succession being divisible into different fascias at regional scale. In his last uh, tableau, the terrain de sediment, Meyer introduced the idea that the 
differentiation of stage and substages is linked to the oscillation of the earth axis, which influences climate, sedimentation, organic development, and etc. This mechanism means that it only needs a few thousand years to differentiate a stage or a substage. And so from 21 to 26,000 years for the stages and a half for substages. Already from, already from the definition given by Meyer Eimer, the evolution of the chronology of the Messinian has been much debated, at least until 1960. Be because of considering the Vienna Basin as the type area, many authors have preferred to use the term Sarmatian to refer to the Upper Miocene. However, being characterized by brackish and dulciculus faunas, these terms are recognizable only in the Vienna, Pannonian, Dacian, Eusinian, and Aralo-Caspian basin, uh, and, and uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, in the so-called uh, Paratetis. At, um, at the 1959 Regional Committee of Mediterranean Neogene Stratigraphy Meeting that was held in Vienna, after extensive discussion, it was decided to define the time interval between the Tortonian and Pliocene with the provision that a stratotype should be defined by Raimondo Selli, professor at the, the Bologna University. Selli convinced the East colleague of the committee that the term Messinian introduced by Meyer Eimer is the most appropriate in the Babel of fascist names and fossil association to represent the age between the Tortonian and Pliocene. However, it does not find a significant suggestion around Messina and identified the neostratotype in the Pasquasia Capodarso area, which is reduced in thickness but complete and continuous. He concludes his paper with an ecastic phrase. During the Upper Miocene, a salinity crisis took place in the entire Mediterranean. As we can see, Stanley defines what will be one of the key words in global geology until today. This concept was developed by Sue, uh, Ryan and Maria Biancacita on Nature in 1973, in which they describe the presence of an evaporite deposits of Messinian of Messinian age discovered during a deep sea drilling project cruise. And in, in this paper, they proposed three environmental depositional models, affirming their preference for the third. The Messidian became one of the most studied stage, especially for its uh, character of seismic reflector in geological and geophysical researches. In 1979, uh, Colalongo et al. Uh, proposed the lower boundary of the Messinian in Falconara near Gela in Sicily to facilitate its recognition on global scale. This boundary was proposed thanks to the first occurrence of the foraminifer Globorotalia coniomyozea and the nanoplankton Amaurolitus delicatus. Unfortunately, it was abandoned because of a lack of a, of a reliable magnetostratigraphic section. In 2000, during the Regional Committee on Mediterranean Neogene Stratigraphy Congress in Rabat, the lower boundary was ratified, and now it's located in Wadakrek in Morocco, where is a continuous marine sedimentation. It is defined by the first occurrence of Globulotaria miotumida for aminifera, and of the nanofossis Amarolitus delicatus. The boundary has been dated uh, at 7.246 million years. In this page, uh, this is the page of the uh, Messinian Global uh, Stratotype Section and Point of, of the ICS website. The base of the Zanklean that corresponds to the base of the Pliocene series is close to the extinction level of the calcareous nanoplankton, nanoplankton that it is a uh, tongue twister, triquetro abdulus rugosus, um, that is the base of the biozone CN10b, and the first appearance of nanoplankton ceratolitus acutus. The GSSP for the Zanklan was ratified in 2000 in the vicinity of the ruins of the ancient city of Heraclea Minoa in Sicily. 
the boundary marks the Pliocene flooding following the Messinian salinity crisis in the Mediterranean. It is located at the base of the Truby formation and is dated astronomically at 5.333 million years. And this is the page of the, uh, on the ICS website. And so in conclusion, the history of Messina stage is one of the most interesting in stratigraphy. Defined by Karl Mayer Eimer in, in an uncertain way, after an initial debate, it was followed by a long period of dropout, followed by the rebirth in the 60s by Raimondo Selli. Today, the Messina stage represents a fundamental period, especially for the Mediterranean geology. As a final consideration, I want to emphasize the importance of digitizing and sharing of archives. It's only through this that it's possible to reconstruct the whole logical process behind the evolution of concepts. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Marco and Fabiana. We have time for questions. No, Johannes, please. Thank you so, so much for this interesting talk. My question is to what extent the naming of the nomenclature uh, is related to or was related to political issues because Meyer really worked in a time where the internationalization of sciences went hand in hand with its nationalization. So it's both uh, de uh, developments uh, uh, working hand in hand and they are interrelated and to what extent this is reflected in the naming of the nomenclature. But um, then I think that in, in many, many cases until today, the political uh, reason entering into the scientific uh, discussion. And so also the, the definition of the GSSP in Morocco was under a long debate because uh, uh, I guess the, the use of the stratigraphic uh, naming uh, Messina is in Sicily, <laughs> and and the 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 section the stratotype is in, in Morocco, and so it is not uh, uh, well defined. Uh, another thing is that uh, in the stratigraphic uh, um, code nomenclature, there are two names that are related to Messina, the Messina and the Zanclean. Zanclean is the uh, old name of the uh, Greek uh, city of Messina. And so it is against the rules of the of the nomenclature. Other questions? No. So thank you so much. Yeah. OK, Jim. OK, you may not know the answer to this, but I'm very interested in how in geology these large tables are so important in the 19th century that um, uh, uh, of the sorts that um, you know you showed early in the talk, and I just wondered. Some of them looked like they were printed um, by lithography on stone um, because they were almost in handwriting. Um, I wondered about because it's always difficult, as anyone who publishes a modern paper knows, to get the brackets and all the different yeah. parts yeah. correct. So lithography was very good for that, but on the other hand, it often could suffer problems of definition and clarity. Yeah. which in typography wouldn't be the, the case. I just wondered if if you had any reflections on the changing nature of the way that the mechanism of reproduction is oh, involved in this. I don't know. We, we have found some uh, handwritten uh, tables. They are very giant uh, tables and some printed. But uh, yes, we can. Before before 19. 1890, uh, it was realized only by by hand. Oh, okay. Uh, and after after 90, uh, we 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 have found some printed uh, tables. Right. So when you talk about Karl Mayer Amaris, um charts, those are hand charts, hand drawn. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I wasn't clear about that. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? 